Your identity will dictate your decisions. Hey, I'm Brian. Welcome to my garage Bible study. You know, it's true. What you think about yourself is what you're going to do with yourself. If you think, oh, I'm a loser, I'm a loser, then you're going to lose. If you think you're going to be able to do something, then in all likelihood, you're going to do those things. This isn't just self-help time. This is actually in the Bible. We're going to go to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3. Here's what it says. I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. I saw a study some time ago that one of the things that makes for successful groups, groups of people come together and they encourage one another and read the Bible together, the number one thing a leader can do of that group is to actually pray for the members of their group. It just makes a difference with it. And this is what Paul is doing with Timothy. As I remember your tears, I long to see you that I may be filled with joy. I'm reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I'm sure dwells in you as well. It is true that God has no grandchildren. God only has children. We don't come to know God because of what our, fam our parents decided. They could have decided to baptize us, and that could be a, a meaningful thing for them. But it's our decision to get baptized that gets us on a new course. It's our decision to receive Christ into our life, not our parents' decision to take us to church that gets us to get to a different place spiritually. Having said that, there is something powerful about being in a lineage of people who have been faithful before you, something about the family structure that impacts us. I saw a study some time ago, and even if you don't see a study, just go in your own mind of people who you respect spiritually. And you'll find, uh, maybe it's a pastor you know, maybe somebody who's been building into you. More often than not, those folks had parents who were faithful, who passed something on to them. They didn't start from just scratch. There was something that they had inherited. Maybe they inherited some disciplines. Maybe they inherited some practices. Maybe God decided to shower some grace on them because he's been in the habit of doing it within the family. I'm not sure exactly how all, the, how all that works, but Paul calls out to Timothy that you come from a lineage that's really powerful and positive. This is part of your identity, Timothy, part of how you perceive yourself. You have to perceive yourself that you come from a line of spiritually important people. And even if you don't, if you don't come from a line of spiritually important people, you have to understand that you are spiritually important and God has placed his spirit in you and he's doing something in you. Now watch how this blows out here in this next verse. For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Paul is saying, I prayed for you. You remember I prayed for you. That thing is in you. Fan that in the flame. When you have an important spiritual moment, when someone prays you and puts their hands on you, or when you hear a sermon in church and it really sets you off, or you get baptized, or whatever, when you have a significant spiritual moment, the important thing is that's a spark that's been put in your life and you just can't hope that that thing catches other things on fire. I've got here in my garage, I've got whole camping equipment over here and all kinds of stuff, fire starters. Getting a fire started, it's not just about starting the lighter or even the fire starter and getting a spark going. That's important, but it's about tending the fire once you have the smallest of flames putting the right amount of material on it, blowing on it, fanning it. The same thing in the physical world where we have to fan something into flame so it becomes a bonfire and emanates heat is the same thing that happens in the spiritual world. When there's a spark, when there's a small flame, you and I have the responsibility. Timothy has the responsibility to take responsibility for her, his spiritual growth and fan the flame. Hey, it's a new year. It's a new year. Do you know what you're going to do this year to fan yourself into flame? Do you know where you're going to go, where the, where the wind of the Holy Spirit is, or what you're going to do to make sure things are burning bright in you? That's part of what this book is. It's a great fan. I hope that you have a goal for this year to get into this book, to read this book, to spend time in it, whether it is a book or whether it is an app or whether it's on your phone, whatever it is. 
This is one of the things that we do to make sure that we're spiritually hot, alive and vibrant. Now, watch what happens next. This is really interesting. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power, of love, of self-control. Paul says, God gave us. Who's us? That's Paul, who's received the Holy Spirit as a Christian. That's Timothy, who's received the Holy Spirit as a Christian. That's Eunice, who's received the Holy Spirit as a Christian, who's talked about. That's other people in his lineage. God has given us, us, this is our identity, and these descriptions or the discipline that we're supposed to enact or what we're supposed to actually do lines up with our identity. When you're convinced that you're something, you're probably gonna do that thing. When you are convinced, one of the ways to uh, ensure that you work out, it's one thing to go, well, I, I gotta lose weight, I gotta work out. It's another thing when you take on the identity and you say, I am an athlete and that's what I do, I work out. Even if you are an athlete that may be very overweight or hasn't picked up, a, picked up a, a ball for a long, long time, or maybe you've never even been in organized sports, but if you believe that you are an athlete, that is going to drive what you do. It's coming out of your identity, not out of what you should do. If you believe you are a caring husband, then that is going to drive your behavior. You are going to act like a caring husband instead of, okay, what should I do today? I guess I should maybe care for my wife, do something nice for her. You may do something nice for her, but if you have solidified that your identity is you are a caring husband, it's gonna drive that behavior. Who, who are we? What is our identity? It tells us what we are. He gave us a spirit, not a fear, so whenever you're fearing, whenever you're afraid, whenever you're paranoid, whenever you're concerned, whenever you're being hyper-conservative, Whenever you are stressed out, these are all words for fear that aren't quite as um, indicting as the word fear. We're not operating inside of our identity. A spirit of fear that causes us to always be thinking that something bad is going to happen or I can't do that, but this because something bad can happen. That's not your identity. He hasn't given you a spirit of fear. You are a bold warrior. You have to believe that you're a bold warrior. You won't act like a bold warrior. Fear, here's another one, but of power. When you believe you're weak, physically weak, spiritually weak, relationally weak, emotionally weak, then you're going to act physically weak, spiritually weak, relationally weak, emotionally weak. You have to believe your identity is one of power. When I go into a room where there's powerful people, I'm kind of 56, I have a certain level of power, so it's not the same illustration right now, but when I would go into a room at 30, trying to gather somebody to be part of the church that I was a part of or, or give somebody some very important information, I would remember that I'm going into that room not as a 30-year-old who's relatively untested. I go into that room as somebody who possesses the Spirit of God and has a spirit of power. That's who I am. That's who you are. Whether you operate that way is another thing, but you have to believe that you're powerful. And of love, power and love. You know, you are loving. You may not do as many loving things as you'd like to, or as many as Jesus is calling you to, but you are, and I am, and any follower of Christ has an identity of love because God has loved us. This gives me the courage when someone is hurting to ask them, hey, are you, are you okay? Can I pray for you? That's a loving thing to do. To just listen with an open mind and open heart as somebody shares their problems. I've uh, had some people close to me, a person close to me who lost a husband and, sh and she is a widow, um, close to a destitute widow actually. My identity is love and Lib and I realized that that means we need to write her a check because that's the most loving thing that we can do right now is look after her, help to look after her financially. That is love. That's not something I should do. It's not something I went to a seminar to learn. It's something that I am, and so therefore I do. And then here's the final one. This is perfect for us for the rest of 2022. He has given us a spirit of, what's it say? Self-control. Sometimes it says discipline. I hear people say all the time, well, I'm not, I'm not a disciplined person. As, as in, there is such a thing as a DNA discipline gene. There's not. But there are people who are disciplined and who are not disciplined. You know who's disciplined? People who believe they're disciplined. You know who's disciplined? People who believe they can be disciplined. You know who isn't disciplined? 
who doesn't make goals, people who feel like, no, I just can't, I, I'm not that, I, I can't control myself, I'm not disciplined, I'm not self-disciplined. Your identity is that you are. You might not be operating that way right now, but you have to believe, no, that is who I am. Because when the Spirit of God comes into me, I get these things. I get more courage than I had before. I get love. I get the ability to be powerful, and that includes powerful over my own actions. I am self-disciplined. What you believe is what you will do. What identity you take on is what you will act on. This is why it's very important for us to be clear on who we are and who we aren't. And parents, by the way, it's one of the reasons why you need to tell your kids who they are. Don't wait for your kids to, to discover who they are. Tell your kids who they are. God told his son who he was. You're my son in whom I'm well pleased. Tell your kids who they are. Give them an identity that's honorable. And hear what God says to us in this word. Take on that identity and these things will naturally come and you can do them, you can. 2022 can be different. Just figure out who you are and what you're going to do. Don't make it too lofty, too extreme, too high bar. Just take some steps knowing you can do this because this is who you are. Thanks for coming to my Garage Bible Study.